Good afternoon, traders. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com, and this is Stock on Watch for the week of September 17th, 2018. Let's begin by reviewing uh, the Qs. Uh, the Qs, a little bit weaker than the rest of the indices. Uh, so far, we have ended the week um, at 183.99, was spread is closed, and we have not challenged the prior weekly high nor the prior weekly low. We're still consolidating at the 180.50 uh, 180 zone. We tapped onto the 10 exponential moving average and also into this cluster that we have uh, visited for quite some time now. 180.40 zone was an area that was tested and retested for several days. Uh, if we're going to try to push uh, this week in, uh, through 186.40, then the price dynamics may carry uh, the price higher back into 186, back into the 187.5, which is the all-time high. And there are even additional targets into 189 and 190. So we may have price velocity if we trade above that range. Uh, I will also watch the 150, uh, 185 zone. 185 zone is very important for this week particularly. A break over prior week's highs definitely going to create the velocity. But we may get a push even if we break through 185.14. So keep in mind, 145.13 is something that we need to watch going into Monday's session. And in fact, uh, that area represents a cluster of resistance that could either make it or break the queues at that point. So 184 uh, and 183.50 to 184, that is the cluster zone that resistance that is coming from prior lows from the one hour chart that may radiate more selling pressure at this point. So keep in mind that 183.50 to 184 is going to be the catalyst for this week. And if we should progress and take out a prior week's high, then we may see a price continuation to the established, uh, to the uh, uh, mentioned targets. All right, let's take a look at the cues right now on the daily chart. Daily chart mildly tap into a minor support level. You could see it right here from this prior pivot high. And on July 25th, creating a shelf of support. Now, this is the area that I've mentioned, the 183.5 through 185. That is the breakout zone. If we manage to break through this area, that's going to be uh, the bigger sign that the price is ready to make a new leg higher into this tradable void all the way to 187.5. Uh, Let's take a look at the SPY. And the spies are a little bit more, um, 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 are a little bit stronger than the Qs. So last week we've traded above the prior weekly high. Even, um, uh, even the daily charts and minor time frame charts are looking a little better uh, for the spies. So the spies right now uh, closed on Friday at two eight uh, two ninety point eighty eight trading above the prior week's high, getting the really nice reversal. Now, what I like about the pullback that we've had last week, and that last week we're setting the stage off this minor support zone, and a lot of stocks uh, have had really nice reversals into minor support. We're gonna review some of the stocks that we, uh, we have traded, and in fact, we did send out uh, the stocks on watch list uh, last week on Sunday. So minor support level at 268 received a lot of buying pressure and pushed the price back up into the 90s. Now we're going to have to see if we're going to push through this high, the 291 right now. So uh, we we had a pretty strong close on Friday. Going to the daily chart, let me just zoom in a little bit. You could see right here that we did have that push. We did have that bottoming tail and zip the price back up from that reversal uh, that came around one o'clock. So it, the price literally took its time on Friday before deciding to trigger a, a 15 minute and then a 30 minute and then a one hour and then it was on its way back up. It still did not challenge uh, the high, the high on Friday, which I would have loved to see a little bit more push. 
we just needed about 40 to 50 cents in order to get out of that trouble zone here in fact um going into monday i will be looking on the one hour charts because the one hour charts if they if they were if they will be pivoting let me just put the one hour chart here okay all right so the one hour chart if we should get any pivoting effect into these areas of the 291 zone and if we break below 290 then uh, I'm sorry if we break below 290.80 then we may see price velocity that may take the price back into the prior visited area on Friday the 290.23 or even 290 and back into the 289 so this is going to be the cluster zone we're going to have to wait for the reaction on monday and see how uh and see how things are uh things are going to be panning out all right let's take a quick look at the diamond and uh, let's review the weekly charts first weekly chart uh, a little bit more bullish than the uh than the spies and also uh definitely than the cues we have uh, we have we have had a doji we talked about this doji actually last week 258 this was the the problem zone if the price would have traded below the 258 zone then a revisit to the 255 area would have been inevitable inevitable so we just pinched in slightly into the 257.80 and we reversed went back up took out the prior weekly high and the prior and and the week before that the 261.80 level so then we completed this really nice uh bull flag mini bull flag setup here and it is ready the price would be really ready to blast higher uh in uh in the diamonds all right iwm iwm was very uh choppy uh had a very choppy trading session last week so we did have a uh we did have a red week we have uh, just triggered a mild reversal tapping on again uh onto this uh 10 exponential moving average and also into a minor support level right here and we're left with a doji if we break above the high of the doji that is 171.94 we may have another projection higher one thing that i wanted to mention is the difficult zone that the russell uh is right now onto this one hour chart you can see that it's trading into the top of the range we also have a flat 200 moving average and one other thing we have option expiration at the end of this week and it's going to be quadruple witching option expiration so that's going to be a little bit major okay it's going to be major uh so uh we have the selling pressure from the 200 moving average i like the fact that at one o'clock when we actually have triggered this these really nice uh, uh we have pivoted and reversed uh and the price went back to challenge these highs we tr uh, we try to perforate through this 200 moving average and try to push a little bit higher so right now things are looking a little bit better uh i would go by the daily chart right now and i would definitely be bullish if we trade above uh if we trade above i'm sorry the weekly chart if we trade above the 172.25 that's gonna be my bullish size like okay yes we're gonna go uh we're gonna even look for some options um uh, in iwm all right so with that being said let's get down to some stocks that we have reviewed and the, uh, some stocks that are in play from last week and this is just a quick recap of what's going on i'm gonna put them just on the weekly chart so you can see how uh how they played out we did have xom at 81 dollars uh at 81 dollars and uh hold on just one second okay here we go 81 dollars and 60 cents we had a protective stop at 79.5 and we did have to, we do have targets into 83 and 84 current price trading uh trading uh at we closed at 82.72 we have achieved target one we locked in some profits and we're waiting patiently to see if this top is going to be dissolved and the price is going to push higher another stock that we have traded last week is disney we didn't have a trigger on disney 
And uh, let me just zoom out a little bit here. Okay, here we go. All right, we didn't have a trigger in Disney. Disney was a trigger over 112. It did not meet our entry criteria, so this trade was canceled. One of the best winners, uh, one of them, is WBA Walgreens. And Walgreens had a really nice pivoting zone at the 10 exponential moving average into minor support level with the risk of 67.30. Our entry was $68.60. We have targets into a 71, 72, and 74 dollar area. Uh, we're currently in trail mode right now, but it has a really nice progression to the upside. Another winner into our list is 3M. All right, 3M long at 214. Our risk was 205.5. We have targets. Uh, we have targets into uh, 215, 216, and 220. And uh, we have currently locked in some profits in, uh, in 3M. Caterpillar, let's take a quick look at Caterpillar, which had a really nice uh, run. Uh, we uh, initiated the trade at 142.15. The risk was 137.50 used. Uh, we have achieved target one and target two. We're in active trail mode right now. Uh, some of our first two targets were 146 and 147. Microsoft, so it was a beautiful week. I wish I could say the same for the following week. We have very few stocks that we're watching. All right, uh, let's get to Microsoft. My, our Microsoft entry was uh, 109, currently trading at 113.37. Um, and we do have targets uh, into 110, achieved, 112.5, achieved, 113, achieved, and we're still looking for further targets into uh, 114 and change and 115. Walmart, uh, Walmart, we have a trade in Walmart. Uh, the stop has not been yet challenged, not acting very well. We do are, we are applying a risk into the uh, 9340 zone uh, so far we're uh, trying to see if we're getting a little bit of reversal so far things not panning out the way we wanted it's challenging these prior lows from this consolidation and any breach uh, under these lows may push the price back lower into 92 so we're going to revisit it in case we're going to get stopped out but this is the only uh, stock uh, uh, walmart wmt that has reversed still has not stopped us uh, out uh, however it is trading uh, very close to our stop uh, loss area uh, visa had an incredible run we initiated the trade at 144.71 and we have targets into 146.5 148 and 150 and uh, it traded it made a high into 148.37 really nice a uh, very very nice uh, progression and in fact the weekly chart suggests that it may be ready to blast uh to have one more blast higher really nice visa okay bmrn um we had a lot of stocks last week but here's the thing there are some weeks where we have a lot of stocks and some weeks where we have very very small and very narrow watch list and uh, we just have to rescan during the week for some trades uh, BMR and long at $98.92. Uh, we had targets into um, uh, $100 and $102 and $102.05. You could see here that the weekly is still trading into our directional bias and we're looking for further targets. Uh, and also, BMRN has achieved a target one. So uh, we're raising our stops on that. Marriott. Love this stock, love to trade it long at 126.7. Overachiever, uh, it has hit our target one level uh, at $130. We're waiting for more into 130.25 and 132 zone. So really nice move in, in uh, Marriott. ATVI, a uh, very nice move in uh, ATVI as well, was one of our best stocks right now. Uh, our entry was $75.78. We had targets into $80.27 and uh, $82. Uh, we have a further extension. Actually, our last target was $82 into resistance right here. However, uh, I have decided to give it a little bit more room um, based on uh, the 
hourly in the four hour charts, we may still have room to continue to the upside. So ATVI back to uh, uh, one of the great winners uh, this week. Uh, SNPS, uh, long at $102.24. Uh, and so far it's still, uh, it's still in, in trading right now. It's trading above our entry zone. So it closed on Friday at 102.72 and it hit 103.4. This was one of our, uh, one of our target levels. Intel, we had Intel, we had actually two stocks, Intel and CSX that were short. And we talked about these trades, short at 46.20. We do have uh, targets into 45, 44, and 43, 20, uh, 23. And currently I'm using a trail stop of $45 to lock in some profit on Intel. The next stock is CSX. And CSX is also a short, CSX uh, short initiated at $73.75. Uh, we have targets into $73, $72, and right now we're bringing our stop down a little bit to $74.50. We're just choking this trade just a little bit, just because it had a pretty, uh, um, I would say, pretty rangy week um, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, trying to push a little lower. So it didn't really react. Um, uh, for a continuation lower. So we're still, we still have it as a short, but we're choking it so we could just uh, 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 limit our risk to the minimum. All right. Uh, the next stock is DE, and this is John Deere. And uh, DE is a log at 148.5. Uh, we have achieved target one at 150. As you can see, it just broke through this 50, uh, fifty dollars and fifty uh, fifty eight cents, uh, and we're looking for more action to the upside into the 151.5 and 153. Uh, CMG, another uh, winner uh, in our books last week, 483.29 was our entry. And uh, we have the uh, targets into 496, 498, and 500. Target one was achieved, and we're lifting our stop up a little bit right now. The weekly still looks good for a continuation higher. Uh, all right, uh, we also have trades in the VIX, and this is some um, uh, sort of uh, uh, as a separate trade, or even use it as a protection for uh, most of our swings. As you can see, we do have, we did have uh, about 16 or 17 uh, stocks last week. Long, uh, I'm sorry, about 14 long um, and about two, uh, two shorts. And uh, we just wanna use uh, some protection for our portfolio, right? Number one is capital preservation and uh, we need to be very diligent on, uh, on protecting our capital, right? All right, so what we see here uh, into the VIX, as you can see, I still have a few alerts. We have initiated a long at $28. Uh, right now, the price closed on Friday at $27.39. Still have the trade open, and uh, I left room to add four more lots, so I only legged in with one lot. Uh, so bottom line is that if we, if the market should shoot up, I'm going to be looking for possibly to leg in more towards the $26, uh, towards the $26 zone where I have, uh, this current alert. If the price is going to get back over $28, I'm going to look to add at least one more lot into the $28. It should have a target level of $30. Uh, into uh, into priced it into it. So this would be right here, right into this 50 uh, simple moving average. All right, new trades for this week. Twitter, top, top of my list, already legged in very little. On Friday, uh, I initiated the long and I'm looking to add, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking to add a $31.50. I'm looking for a target at least into at least into the 30, uh, 33, 34, 34 and a half. Uh, and I think that the more we consolidate here and the risk that I'm looking to apply is going to be under 
uh, 29, 29.25. So uh, Twitter looks uh, good right here. Uh, it is neutral. Uh, the flush bar, we had the flush bar the prior week. This week, we pretty much closed in a doji over $31.50. I see the price uh, going back up to, to, the mention, to the above mentioned targets. Another stock on our watch list is KEM. KEM uh, over $22. Uh, in fact, $21.87 is my trigger. Uh, I see it going higher at least into the 24, 24 and a half, 26 back into the top of this range. So obviously to the long list, KEM, Oxy, not a lot of stocks, okay? Not a lot of stocks this week compared to last week. Not a lot of really good setups, but Oxy, I like the fact that it is basing uh, into this minor support zone right here. Uh, and uh, right into this uh, uh, 50 simple moving average, a trigger over 78.05 may push it back up into the 80s uh, and possibly into the 82 zone at least. So this is Oxy. Uh, also another stock, KBH. Um, this is something that drew my attention. Some of the home builders are kind of relatively weak. Uh, so KBH uh, running, you know, doing a top-down analysis through all the home builders and the sector, I find that KBH is a little bit more, uh, I would say, bullish uh, when we're looking at the weekly chart. So I think that if this week, this upcoming week, we're going to trade above uh, $25.78, it may have room to run into $27 and $28. Another stock that is just on watch, not an uh, initiated uh, trade, is CVX. Chevron, uh, and th th quite bullish week. You can see it right here. Uh, we have uh, pretty much bottomed into an area of support at 113.50. If we should trade over 117.65-ish zone, we may get another push back up, back into the 122 to 123 at least. Uh, it is just on watch right now. Uh, Procter & Gamble, I mentioned it on Twitter last week. It is ready to blast higher. 83.5, Current, uh, currently the price closed at 83.6 on Friday. Uh, a balance into 83.4, 83.5 may push the price higher through this flat 200 moving average and may release more buying pressure to uh, to push the price uh, back into the 86 to 88 zone, at least. So this is something that I have on my watch, Procter & Gamble. XLF, the sector seems a little interesting right now. Um, and uh, the weekly chart has a lot of resistance at this price level of $28.50. In fact, you could see that from way back in March, this has been sort of like the cap, okay? Sort of like, you know, uh, heavy resistance, sort of like a lid, okay? So that is basically a lot of resistance at the uh, 28.50. When the price is going to unleash and break through this resistance, and this resistance is between 28.50 and, um, and 28.75, we're gonna get a push to the upside and the price is gonna come back into the 30s, uh, 30, uh, 30, uh, $30, $30.30, 33, which is the all time high here. And that is from January. So XLF, have it on my watch. Also have it as an alert for the swing over $20.45. Uh, another interesting watch on the weekly is Cisco. And Cisco has a really nice pin here. And what really, uh, uh, what really drew me to the stock is the fact that the pullback was very mild and it didn't really want to push through and test and retest a little bit steeper. It really, uh, it really just um, created this floor at $46. It's this huge, huge minor support deriving from a high back in May 
and deriving from this high back in April. So very, very strong chart pattern. We had the initial breakout. I would have expected a steeper pullback, but the fact that we have a very solid pin effect here, uh, it just shows us that if we trade over $47.50, the pattern may push higher back into the $48. Last but not least, okay, last but not least, something that I have on my watch is Apple. Okay, and I left this for last. Okay, Apple has been consolidating, and as you can see here, this is the prior resistance, and in fact, I'm gonna pull the daily chart here. Okay, this is prior resistance, gravitated in this area, pushed a little higher, and is trying to find a balance off the uh, 10 exponential moving average. Apple is on my watch, and also, I would like to watch it uh, right here. Uh, into this cluster you can see that right now it's trading below the 200 and below the 50 this is where the price is if we get a push higher through the uh, 200 uh, 224 zone 224 and change we may challenge again the prior high I love the way the pattern is setting up even on the one hour so we had the low and we have a series of rising bottoms, rising bottom here, rising bottom here, rising bottom here, and this may be another rising bottom. So this, uh, this is the potential risk that I will associate uh, to this long. So to me, it looks very interesting over 224 and change with a risk possibly into the uh, into 222.20 uh, uh, zone. Uh, any reversal at this point may push the price higher back into uh, back into Thursday's high of 228 and even into the high that was already set. Uh, and that was on uh, September 5th at 229.67. So this is what I like right here. This was the last one. All right. If you like what you hear, don't forget that we have a trading room. It is the Trade Out Loud Live trading room where we day trade uh, futures and we swing trade uh, futures uh, uh, futures indices and commodities and also we swing trade stocks and ETFs uh, if you would like to give us a try you can uh, visit our website it is tradeoutloud.com forward slash live trading room don't forget that this is your last chance to lock in our 199 per month rate uh, for the life of the subscription so uh, the price is going to expire today uh, at around 8 p.m. and uh, the new price is going to kick in which is $299 a month. Uh, hope everyone will have a real profitable trading week. I'll see you guys next week.